Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in the Shrink Into the Com video, we're going to be discussing the benchmarks of the RX Vega. These benchmarks pertain to 3D Mark Time Spy. A number of you have messaged me asking my opinions on this because the graphics score perhaps is concerning a number of you. It's scoring, this would be the possible Vega entry, around 5,700 points, which is almost bang on to a GTX 1070 and what you'd expect it to score. On the other hand, a 1080 scores well over 7,000, and a 1080 Ti scores around the 9,000 to 10,000 range, obviously depending upon the rest of your system. This is obviously rather concerning, and is well below the performance of, well, it's pretty nice against the GTX 1080 Ti, which AMD have been touting. However, there are numerous reasons I don't particularly feel concerned about this. First of all, why do we believe it's Vega? Then I can go into some analysis. Well, there's a number of reasons. One, the RAM speed is listed at 700 megahertz with 8 gigabytes of HBM, uh, sorry, 8 gigabytes of RAM, which is almost identical to what you'd expect a Vega card to be running at. The driver is listed as non-FM approved, i.e. beta. And perhaps the most damning of all is the device ID, which is actually being listed as, wait for it, wait for it, 687F colon C1, which is almost, am which is almost well, it is identical, actually, to the Doom demos we've seen numerous times by now. Now, I'm actually re-uploading this video because, honestly, last time I made a screw-up and I confused two device IDs in my head, and so I wanted to clear that up in this video so you didn't have any ambiguity. So, the previous video, I made a screw-up, I hold my hand up to it, I messed the two device IDs up in my head. Because there are a couple of device IDs we've seen. In fact, some of the leaks we've seen are for CF, uh, sorry, for C3. So 6687FC3 is another device ID we've seen quite a number of times. Now here's where things get a little bit difficult. First of all, the clock speed is just 1200 megahertz, which is far from what you'd expect from retail silicon. One of the reasons I'm almost certain it's going to be much faster, almost 1500 megahertz, I reckon, is because of the MI25, which AMD have revealed already. Remember, that is passively cooled, and the MI25 gets its name because it is the performance of the card with single precision. That means that full precision, uh, FP32, it's getting around 12.5 T-flops, which means that if it has 4096 cores, it has to have a clock speed of over 1500 megahertz for that to even make any level of sense. Multiple device IDs make sense for a multiple cores, or multiple revisions on multiple core types. For example, GP104, of course, is a 1080 and the 1070, 2560 CUDA cores versus 1920 CUDA cores. They're the same GPU core, but simply disabled CUDA cores, which makes sense from a yields and economic point of view. The 1080, of course, costs more money because obviously it needs more CUDA cores, you know, all of them, to be running, whereas on the other hand, 1920 CUDA cores can be for GPUs that don't quite make the cut. For example, if 100 CUDA cores is not working, well, you can't sell that card as a 1080. For example, you can simply disable the remainder ones and the remaining ones, excuse me, and then you can badge it as a 1920, uh, uh, sorry, the 1920 CUDA cores which remain as a 1070, and NVIDIA make profits, and it also makes the GP104 core less of a lost leader. It makes it cheaper. There are a whole bunch of different things we could start analysis, uh, putting analysis on with this particular graphics card, and honestly, my whole thing, and uh, I'm going to vastly simplify it for this video, I'm just not concerned. Because A, this is a beta driver. B, we don't know the state of the hardware. Now, A, it doesn't have full clock speeds. But even if you did upclock it enough, it probably isn't enough to make up the golf of the 1080, I'll grant you. But we don't know other things. We don't know the drivers. We don't know, like, does it have some of the cache disabled? Does it have any cache? What's the results for the GPU, like, does it have some, does it even have cooling running? Is it running passively? You might say, of course not. Well, how do you know that? How do we know that this is not a version they're not testing internally for a laptop? We don't. Now, you might say, well, that's not very likely, yeah, but you don't know what they're doing. A lot of the time, I mean, for the love of God, the original Xbox was made out of bloody laptops, 
and it's not the only time they've done stuff like this. Like the um, the original NES had its D pad created because the folks at Nintendo, when they were putting it together, they would literally use some Game and Watch uh, parts and they literally stuck it together. It was just kind of what they do. So we don't know really what the state of this is. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying we don't know what they're doing internally. Another thing. Well, what market is this going after? For example, we don't know that it doesn't have the same device ID because they're still doing tests. Perhaps they've disabled a couple of uh, additional cores using the driver, which might not show. Perhaps they're artificially lowering the clock speed and perhaps they're trying to figure out what segment of the market they can target. So in other words, perhaps this has got 50 CUDA cores or something, I'm sorry, compute units, or 52 or whatever number, I'm just throwing arbitrary numbers here, with 1200 megahertz, and they're trying to make a card which is cheap, but targets the GTX 1070. Do you remember AMD have f- given full reign to their dev- to their board partners to put any amount of graphics memory they want, they can configure the RAM how they wish to. Now, does that mean that I have full confidence in Vega? No, of course not. I don't have Vega. I don't have a Vega GPU here. I do believe it's going to be very competitive for Pascal because, honestly, it wouldn't make sense for it not to be, uh, given the fact, A, it's released a lot later, and B, the performance results we've seen, and C, well, just the leaks in general. But that doesn't preclude the fact it could be a disappointment. I'm hoping it's not a disappointment because that would suck for us as customers. But I don't have a vested interest. My personal opinion with this is I believe that this is nothing to worry about. The reason I'm interested in this primarily isn't the fact of the performance numbers. It's that, well, it's interesting. Because it tells us that AMD is still tinkering with stuff. And it leads us to the discussion of, well, are they trying to create a competitor to the 1070? Or or, or are they screwing around with the clock speeds or perhaps messing around in the back end? It is possible that they are having problems with the final revision silicon to get the clock speeds up. But uh, I don't know about that. Because once again, Vega, um, I'm sorry, the MI25s do use Vega architectures. It's, it's, a, it's a very weird situation we're in. I'm really hoping over the next couple of months that we get some answers for this. And obviously, at the end of the day, until AMD gives us solid answers, or board, board, uh, board partners get shipped out their, their revision boards, and then obviously leaks start happening, we can only start to speculate. Personally, once again, I'm stressing the word personally. I don't have evidence of this. I don't work at AMD. I don't believe that this is anything to concern yourself with. So don't panic just yet. Just, you know, hold hold on to your horses. There is one other thing that I'd like to kind of bring into all of this, and that is, well, Vega is one of those graphics architectures which is completely and utterly radically new. So it is possible that what they're doing on the back end is maybe tweaking stuff with this particular card, maybe perhaps disabling things or figuring out what impact certain things have. Therefore, they can be like, okay, well, for bug fixing purposes, if we disable this, this happens, or perhaps, you know, we're trying to figure out what happens when we're doing this, or, um, you know, just general stuff in the back end. So, because it is a completely different architecture, you can't even use the power consumption or any of that stuff to make logical guesses of what the final clock speed is going to be, and you certainly can't do so against, like, the 480, because obviously Polaris and Vega are very different GPU architectures. At the end of the day, this is it's kind of like guessing, but we don't have enough pieces of the puzzle. That's not to say that it's not fun to do so, but I would say don't get out pitchforks and say that the GPU is going to be disappointing. My personal opinion is that it's looking to be very interesting indeed. But with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.